Sincerely, you are welcome to this, a very special episode of the sometimes popular Unsolved Norfolk. Today, we shall be joined by four terrified local Norfolkians, Norfolks, Northerns, four local people who on that fateful night of August the 1st, 2009, came face to face with a certain crimson lady. Join us on Unsolved Norfolk's first ever live investigation. Ladies and gentlemen, bring a spare pair as we investigate the Cuttlewood Hauntings. First, I would like to say congratulations on your recent marriage. I am betting Millie looks stunning in her wedding dress. Or did she not, Bruce? I am blind. I can see that. So tell me, what happened on that night? Well, we were just about to settle down for the night. And then we heard her screaming. And I don't like to admit this. But I farted. I was frightened. We shot about a bed, unzipped the tent door. Now Johnny made me laugh because I'm bored. He said I looked like a penis popping out of the fly of a who's pair of trousers. Thanks for that. Screaming continued. It got louder and louder. We saw a light on in the old building over there. It wasn't until a while later that we realised it had been abandoned for 20 years since the fire. Now some young man fell asleep next to the log fire with his shell suit on. Reportedly, when he woke up, he tried to drop and roll, but the whole place was so well carpeted with expensive shag, Sex. shag pile rugs, that it caused the fire to continue to spread quickly through the building. Turns out that Norfolk's Elton John Tribute Act was staying there. It was goodbye, the yellow brick road. Where you all put a candle in the wind? I do like a pun. Two brothers, Johnny and Jimmy James, also heard the screams. Let's see what they have to say. Hey, Ray B. Hey, hey. Not bad. Well, we just pushed up our tent. I was all worried about raccoons and whatnot. Not too fond, are you? Not since we brought none of James here and she got sprayed up the anus. <laughs> that actually happens. Normal from Norfolk and all that. Anyhow, what was I saying? But no. Oh yeah, it was, it was around quarter past ten as the moon was due east. The crow did a crow. As he do. So we knew what time it was. All was still. We was chatting about his dog. Uh, lipstick. <laughs> I, I called her that because when she was a puppy, she's always trying to force a snout into Margaret's lipstick box. Margaret sadly died. I mean, I was over the moon and she was a nasty old crow. She's feeling a bit sad that day. Through the prayers and silence, we had a horrifying scream. Oh, I, I almost bottomed out and very nearly fell forward into the fire. And this here tracksuit is not, I repeat, not flame retarded. What? Retarded. I prefer learning difficulties, but whatever. And I believe I'm correct in saying there were other witnesses to this occurrence. Oh yes, our lovely newlyweds over there. Bruce and Millie were in the tent opposite. Millie was talking about getting her hair done, I think. She said something about getting some permanent hair. introduce you to a very special guest here on Unsolved Norfolk, our portal to the other side. His unique talents have made him one of Norfolk's most special assets. He's a medium, but he feels like a large. 
Please welcome Melody Medium, Jerry Dovetail. Hi Jerry, please tell the viewers at home a little bit more about yourself and your unique gift. Well I was just 10 years old when I first heard the song. See, I hear the dead talk to me. I'm a rare type of medium that is often referred to as a mad medium. Thus, I can only communicate through that medium, pun totally intended there. So, if the moon goes up that high and the air is right, I can hear everything. Wait, I'm getting a song now. A woman, about mid-thirties I say, long red hair and breasts. It's not a woman you take out on a date. She gets a bit drunk and talks around her ex-boyfriend and then cries at you and tells you she knows he's no good for her, but that just makes her want him more. He hit her back in 73, but she forgave him the next day because he bought her a necklace from Argos, the expensive pages. You know the type. Filthy. Wait, I can hear her singing. Come rescue me, for there's a fire in my soul and one in my house. Oh, my brother is actually on fire as we speak. Oh, don't roll on the carpet's tearing. Now that's fantastic. Well, you've met our witnesses and our team. Yet there's still one more person you've yet to meet. It's our Dean, our brave cameraman. Hello, my name's Dean. I'm 41 years old, single, love to cuddle, with a great sense of smell. Well, that's enough cut. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has arrived. This is our investigation into the Cuttlewood hauntings. Are we ready? Yes! No! Bring a spare pair. Let's go hunt. We just heard a creaking next door, and then suddenly a door slammed shut. Sorry guys, it's just that little farted, and I'm unsure of the damage at the moment. Shh! I hear it. Help me! I thought if I ran a bath and then got in, then I wouldn't get burned. Cause you can't set fire to water. Which was true, but the smoke got in my lungs and I died of death. She died naked. Fantastic. I'll give him my good answer now. There's more coming. One of you is wearing the same track suit as my brother. Take it off. Cause a cheap one sticks to your skin. Can anyone smell that? No. No, I would you? That's it? The wet one. Hey. Wet one. Oh. Wet. I don't do this shit anymore. I don't do this shit. I'm out. I'm done. Out of the way. I don't want to do this anymore. No, no. No, no, that way. So, here we have Jimmy James on Unsolved Norfolk. Please, Jimmy, can you tell the viewers at home a little bit more about yourself? Um, I'm Jimmy James. My brother's around here somewhere. What's his name? I'm 42, um, and I've been taking on orphan pandas quite often. 
because they're a bit lonely. So, Jimmy, what's the panda's name? Uh, Bernadette. That's a fine name for a bear. So? It's a panda. So then, can you tell the viewers at home what's your take on what happened on that fateful night on August the 1st? Well, we heard strange noises going on. First, I thought it was whistling bricks, but I think it was probably a bit of swing door barn action, but I, I think there's something going on. It's a bit peculiar, but I can't quite put my finger on it, because it would scare me. Well, that's Jimmy's account. There's only one thing for it. Let's ghost hunt. And so, is this the room that all of you saw the figure of a woman in? Am I correct? No. That were a boy, that were. Jerry, are you getting anything? I'm just trying to tune in. Oh, Bruce! Bruce! Over here! Over here! Norfolk folks decided to go and investigate. This would be a decision that would change their lives forever. Bad, bad. 